First of all, I just want to say thanks for coming and thanks for sharing some time with me to give, for me to express an idea, a strategy that I've used for many years. If I could see you, I would recognize that many of you probably deep down inside of you have a dream that you always wanted to explore, something that you wanted to try, something that you wanted to venture out and make it your own. This is about my journey and about something that I've worked on for many years. It's a strategy. Within that strategy comes many other ideas. But let's talk about the journey. My business education started in the 70s. My real life business experiences started in the 80s and progressed for another 40 years. Within that, I had the opportunity to sell companies, to acquire companies, to dissolve companies, and actually grow some every once in a while, and unfortunately lose a business from here from time to time. Within that environment, you begin to believe that you have seen it all. But in reality, you're just beginning the journey of learning again. When you take a step from that perspective, I was fortunate to spend the last 30 years of my life in the professional beauty space, which provi provided a lot for me and a lot of opportunities. Now, you could say I am follically challenged, <laughs> but in that, I've learned a lot within the hair industry environment. And within this environment, we have more entrepreneurs and dreamers and creative individuals that I've seen in almost any other industry I have participated in. What is nice is that the strategy, the idea that I had, made it nice to fit into this environment. My professional career was built on learning business models. And if you look at all the business models that are out there, and there are a lot, there are probably more business models or ways of executing something than there are fingers and toes in this room. And I probably have tried every one of them, adopted every one of them, and tried to execute every one of them. What's interesting is that they are all built on the same premise, that you start here, and then you do some analysis. And from that analysis, you make the next step forward to develop your plan. But guess what? Everybody in your competitive ecosystem is doing the same analysis, coming to the same results, and in the end, it's about who can execute to market first. Not something really anticipating, not something very creative. And I'm sure everybody in this room has watched the TV show, The Shark Tank, or maybe read many books on all the entrepreneurs that have started businesses. And within those books, they share the same story. I saw an idea for a product. I saw an idea for a service that I knew somebody wanted. Within that, it's all about anticipating the future, anticipating what will be next. Anticipation is the key to the concept beacon strategy. If you look at this beacon that is shining here, and I'm a boat out in the Lake Michigan or in the ocean trying to find safe harbor, I can only see the beacon. I can only see that it's directing me to that location very similar to a business model. I can only see what's there. But if I place myself in that beacon, if I place myself in that lighthouse or on the shores, I see all the possibilities of how to get the safe port, but I also see all the disruption and all the challenges of finding that safe port to dock in. So let's talk about beacon strategy. Let's talk about what it's really about. 
It's about anticipating the disruption that occurs. It's about looking at all the things that are out there. So let's imagine that you're sitting at your company's 10th anniversary party. You're sitting around a table. You're talking to all your other colleagues. You're talking about the journeys, the challenges, everything that occurred. And all the things that occurred, you made a momentarily quick, decisive decision to adjust to. They probably don't even exist in the business plan that you put together because you can't anticipate everything. But you can anticipate it if you get to the future and look backwards. By being in the future and by looking backwards, you can then begin to see the possibilities of political, social, generational challenges that will occur. And by anticipating those challenges, you become the disruptor, not the disrupted. So let's talk about some big disruptors that I recognized a long time ago. In the beauty space, everybody that owned a distributorship, everybody that owned a brand, and still today, was made up of this generation. Generation X. That generation built their careers and built their businesses on maintaining a work life and balance. But they also built those businesses on face to face, handshaking, touching of their customers. And every customer that they were doing business with was of the same generation. But lo and behold, another generation was beginning to appear. And that generation didn't believe in work-life balance. They believed that they would work for an organization only if they wanted to, and that they would never be working for an organization. They would only be working with an organization. And their methodology for communication was purely texting in mobile devices, they were not very much interested in real life, face-to-face, -face, talking to somebody. And soon, at the same time, less than nine to 10 years later, the Gen Z would appear, which had a completely different philosophy of how they wanted to work. They wanted a collaborative, multitasking environment. They wanted to be involved in everything. They wanted to see and experience everything possible a business could offer. And their form of communication was, video, was a video conversationalist. Look at what's happened now. What, what you see now is that they wanted to, sp to speak and talk to everybody through videos and, and conversations. These three disruptors would be the basis of how we would build and create a new business because we could see the future of what we thought would be needed. So we came up with a concept in 2007. At that point in time, I was still working for another business entity. But we knew that these changes would have a dramatic effect on how we did our business. In 2011, we decided that it was time to execute it. I was no longer involved with that entity anymore, and it was time to go out there and work with our other Gen X patriots or compatriots in the organizations to launch a concept. The concept would be digital in nature. And at that time, the concept would be looked at as something that is nice, but in 10 years later would be embraced as a necessity. But yet we had to position that with them. So let me tell you about how we sold this concept. First of all, of course, you can tell I'm not a Gen, Gen Xer. I'm a baby boomer. But we had to go to all our fellow compatriots that I had worked with for many years. And we had to explain to the distributors that the idea 
of having one way of doing business was no longer going to work. And what was that one way? Having salespeople going from salon to salon to make that handshake, that, that nice, friendly relationship. Because their customers were going to change. And that relationship wouldn't be as important as it once was. Secondly, because they were dependent on their salespeople, we had to come up with a way of bridging the gap so the salesperson felt part of the change, not being just embracing the change. They had to be a part of it. And lastly, we had to make them believe that this was an alternative to a brick-and-mortar option. This was a digital alternative. This was a digital store. And yes, we're talking about e-commerce, but in the beauty space, e-commerce didn't even exist until 2016, believe it or not. Secondly, we, the Gener X people that were selling the concept, along with the Generation X people that had to embrace the concept, had to build a business based on Gen Y and Gen Z in small town America. Our challenge was to build a campus. I realize that we're not in tech world across the United States, but we had to build a, a campus in small town America that would draw people in. We had to find people that had left small town America and wanted to come back to a business that offered them the same capabilities and the same opportunities that they would find in a major metropolitan area. We had to build a building and a concept that provided the ability for collaborative work, the ability to roam as they felt free, the ability to bond with other people of their same age. We also had to provide them with opportunities that they would find no place else. Opportunities to build a brand, to have a brand represented in major retailers around the United States, to work with vendors in China, to source products, to build websites that literally hundreds of thousands of people visit every single day to buy products but they were in small town America. We also had to realize we, as an organization, had to take a risk in order to keep them. We had to entrust 21-year-olds and 26-year-olds to go out there and build brands, build concepts, build websites, when maybe this could have been the first job that they ever had, and deal with organizations that were made up of much more mature individuals that may not understand them, but understood that they know how to speak to the clients that they were going to begin to service. In summary, beacon strategy is a very easy concept. Applying it becomes difficult because you need to be aware of everything, every social change and every generational adjustment, every political activity that it's occurring. The most important part is that you need to put yourself in the future. You need to look backwards, not forwards, in order to accomplish what it is you're trying to create. By looking forward, you will come up with numerous excuses of why you cannot accomplish what you want to do, whether it be funding, people, etc. But by going into the future, looking backwards, bringing that information to the present and building your structures now, you become the disruptor, not the disrupted. Is the quote behind me says, either you can be a part of the disruption or the disruption is going to be 
because it's going to disrupt you. I want to thank you for your time, and I hope it was beneficial for you.